Welcome, my name is George Zelanti. I'm head of the School of Architecture and Built Environment. I'm here today to speak to you about architecture, landscape architecture, urban design and planning. I'm going to speak to you about those as, as your careers as opposed to just a, uh, an educational experience. I always like to start with a slide. As you can see, it's about 10 of the world's tallest buildings there, ranging from the Empire State Building built in 1931 in New York through to the Burj Dubai in 2008 in uh, Dubai, of course. The Empire State Building is about 380 metres in height. The Burj Dubai about 830 metres in height. Of course, the gradation through that. To put that into context, our tallest building in Adelaide is about a third of the Empire State Building. It's about here. All right, just to give you a feel. Now, what is architecture? Architecture is the physical design of each and every one of those buildings. The form, the shape, how they actually work, and how they're constructed. That is what architecture is about. It is taking an imagination, an idea, and realising it like this. Landscape architecture is designing the space in between those buildings within the city. So if these are located in the city, and I ask you for one moment to imagine all these buildings are actually located and built in within our CBD here in Adelaide, not the residential, not the um, suburban areas, but within the CBD, the square mile of Adelaide. The spaces in between would be landscape architecture, the way they're designed. Planning is where those buildings should be located and why they should be located there to best serve this city. And urban design is locating those spaces in between in a way that it all works. So that's, in a simplistic way, what each of those three careers is about. And by the way, just to finish that point, the Burj Dubai 830 metres is about 150 metres taller than Mount Lofty. So if it were built in the CBD here in Adelaide, you'd be looking over the top towards Murray Bridge. But architects do a lot more than just simply design buildings. Here's an example of the Miller Viaduct in France, designed by Sir Norman Foster, a world famous British architect. He designed, conceived the idea, designed the bridge, designed the shape, the form. <coughs> the engineers came along and did the structural analysis of this to make it stand up. But the concept, the whole idea came out of Sir Norman Foster's brain. So the architect actually designed the bridge, conceived the idea. Landscape architecture, and I love this slide because this is North Terrace. It's the boulevard that's here. Because it's in our doorstep, we tend to ignore it. We walk up and down this, probably some of you, almost every day. It is one of the world's greatest boulevards. A piece of brilliant landscape architecture. But because it's here, we don't appreciate it. But that is landscape architecture. You walk down that street, the way the spaces fit together, everything seems to work. The fountains, the planting, the seating, it all works. The urban design aspect of that is, think of those public buildings as the museum, the art gallery, the library, how that integrates with that footpath. How the university, the fences now down, has actually allowed that <coughs> space to come in. So you, as the members of the public, can come into the university grounds and we can go out into the public space. That is urban design. The linking of all those buildings in a way so that the whole space actually works. And I think you would have to agree that it does. It's here, and I encourage you after this talk, rush across and experience it for yourselves. So my school, the School of Architecture and Built Environment, specialises in delivering those programs in architecture, landscape architecture, planning and urban design. The pathway to each of those careers is through our three-year undergraduate degree known as the Bachelor of Architectural Design which provides all the foundation studies you require to be successful in those fields. This diagram articulates that quite well. There's a three-year Bachelor of Architectural Design, the foundation degree. You do that, then once you've finished, you can articulate into a Master of Architecture or Master of Landscape Architecture, Master of Planning Urban Design or straight out Master of Planning. This is a professional area. This is where you learn to go out, actually finish and work as an architect or planner or whatever you choose to do. This is where you get the foundation skills to actually be able to articulate and get into that program. If you are so inclined that you actually like a lot of maths and so on, you would rather do engineering, well don't despair, you can still come back and be an architect. Any engineers here? No, well that's okay. You can do a Bachelor of Architectural Engineering 
and then go on and do a Masters of Architecture so you can become both an engineer and an architect. Now, the, the message I want to get across to you, though, is that this is a minimum five-year commitment. If you come here, it's not a three-year degree that you can practice. It's three years undergraduate level plus at least two postgraduate level. And I'll explain that a little bit better later on. But it's important that you take that message away. It is at least a five-year commitment. So what sets us apart? I mean, you people have to choose between this university, other universities here in this state, and also interstate. Some of you maybe even overseas. What sets us apart, certainly in this state and also uh, interstate, is that ours is the only program in Australia that offers this four different career paths. You come and do our three undergraduate degree, you can choose to go into four different careers. I'm actually adding another two next year, so you'll have a choice of six. Nowhere else can you do that in this state or in the other states in Australia. So you can certainly end up as an architect, landscape architect, planner, urban design, or two new areas that I'm currently working on. The other aspect that's quite different with us is that we, have, we provide double master's degrees. If you look at this architecture and landscape architecture, a lot of that is common. There's about one year common between the two. They are two-year master's programs. Because they're common, if you're doing architecture and you say, well, I might actually want to specialise in landscape as well, you do an extra year on top and you get a master's in architecture and a master's in landscape architecture. So what that means is that you can graduate in both fields, you can work in two fields at least, it makes you much more employable. So when the economy goes up and down, you're multi-skilled, you have a better opportunity to get a job than people who are not. And that is quite different for us. And as I said, we're adding a couple of extras next year, so you'll have even greater choice. The other interesting thing about our program is because you have to do a three-year undergraduate degree first, and because we go into a multidisciplinary approach and we have different careers that you can choose, most of you, I dare say, are 17, year 12, maybe 18. Certainly most of you are around about the 18 when you come here in first year. And you're choosing this career path because you're interested in design or creative arts. But you're not sure which of these fields to go into. Well, with our degree, you don't have to make the final choice until you're about 20 or 21. That is, once you've finished the three-year degree, and at that point you will have experienced some landscape architecture, some architecture, some urban planning, some actual urban design as well. So you will be able to make an informed selection as to which career you want to go into. And that is a real highlight of our, our degree. It means that you, the la a there's a less likelihood of making a mistake than in other places. And because we are multidisciplinary, that is those four disciplines I've spoken about, you're working with these different uh, disciplines throughout, be they the actual academics or the students themselves. And I can tell you from my own personal experience, that is invaluable later on in life. Where later on if you say you're working with landscape architects but you're doing architecture and you are doing a project, you need a landscape architect, you, can, you know these people, you can ring them up because you're on first name basis with them, encourage them to be part of your team and vice versa. And I know from personal experience that's exactly what's happened to me in the past. You're on first name basis with other professionals in cognate areas. The other really interesting features about our programs that nobody else does is we have an internship program. We do that jointly with the Australian Institute of Architects, Australian Institute of Landscape Architects and with the South Australian Government. So in the fourth year of our degree, that is in the postgraduate area up here, there is an opportunity to spend the best part of a semester outside in industry. You don't spend the whole of the time there, you spend five to six to eight weeks. You may do it part time, you might, might do it in block. But that actually counts towards your study. It counts as a whole subject, if you like, towards your study. But you're, the beauty of this is that you are out there in industry, and let me tell you a secret about that, but not to tell anybody else. This is your best interview situation that you can have. It's not meant to actually create a job for you, but if you're working somewhere and they really like you, they will and if they can possibly hang on to you, they generally do. So it's an opportunity you have. You come back, you've had some great experience, you bring that experience into the classroom. You can tell me, George, you don't know what you're talking about because I've worked here and here and they showed me how to do it. And I don't have a problem with that. The other aspect is internationalisation. We have a long history of taking students overseas on studios. 
So we take them many different parts around the world to actually undertake studios. And I'll explain that a little bit better later on. We also do student exchanges. So if you, say, have friends or in the US or the UK or <coughs> another country where you want to study, or you want to particularly just go and study then, regardless of friends, you can convince the university to take you. We will liaise with that university and look at the subjects that they want you to do. We'll try to marry them up with our subjects here and help you to select those subjects that mean that when you're studying over there, they actually count towards your studies back here. So that semester, that six months you're spending away, is not wasted in terms of lengthening your program by a whole semester. That actually counts towards your study. So, and that's proven very popular over the years as well. Our program is part of the Adelaide Approved Scheme. So if you get an, a, a, an ATAR score of 80 or greater, you have a guaranteed place within the degree. That does not mean that if you get less than that, you won't get in. But it means that if you have 80, it is guaranteed, regardless of what the cutoff is. That is something to keep in mind, especially if you put our, uh, our degree first preference, because it means you get um, first go at that. ERA, Excellence in Research Australia, it is a government body that actually measures the level of research that each discipline undertakes within each of the universities in Australia. Now we, my discipline area, architecture and built environment, we have actually been measured as being world standard. What does that mean to you? That means to you that we are international level um, researchers. That research knowledge that we glean gets fed back into you as our students. So it means you're always, we're all, you are always up to date because we're always up to date and current. We're the only university in this state that actually has that standard in architecture. We have excellent industry links. We have more than 80 industry professionals, that's architects, landscape architects, planners, urban designers, who actually come in and teach with us. They actually teach you as the students. So they actually ground us very, very much, help ground you as a student. So that some of the theory that we give, they actually ground in the real world. They actually teach and they also take part in the tutorials. And as of the beginning of this year, we have what I consider to be the best model making laboratory in the state with 3D printer, laser cutters, scanners and so on. And it gives you, the, as students, the opportunity to actually experiment with your designs and do things you could not have done in the past. Our three year foundation degree is actually quite elegant, very, very simple in structure. And to explain, three years, one, two, three, this blue sector here is all, that's 50% of the program, is all design. And you'll notice it's landscape, architecture, urban design, landscape, architecture, landscape, urban design, architecture, landscape, architecture, and imbued within that is also urban planning. On this side, these different colours are the technical tools that you will need to actually be able to function, do your designs properly. So they include environmental skills, history, theory, construction skills, representation, which is IT and drawing and knowing how to represent and present. Your, your ideas. Now these skills are learnt and they're actually experimented with in here as you design. And it works exceptionally well. It's a new program that's only been operating for the last two years. And the feedback we've had from both industry and the students is superb. They love it. The, at the international level, I think it's important to appreciate, this is just a list of my permanent staff, my full-time in-house in staff. More than half of those are either born overseas or have worked overseas. And the great thing for you is that as intending students, you, we bring that experience into the classroom again. So it's not just the students who are there from overseas, but it's also the academics themselves who have actually practised or have come from overseas so they can give you that experience. I'm going backwards here, am I? In terms of international opportunities, these are some of the countries where we've been. Germany, Korea, the Czech Republic, Sweden, the UK, and we've had many, many studios in places like Japan, China, Malaysia, Italy and India. This year's studios, we have three. One in New York in November, one in Tokyo, I think, in October, and we have one, Architects Without Frontiers, Without Borders in Nepal, also around about the same time. So we have three international studios between now and the end of the year. Well, we don't just limit to the final years, it's also second and third years. They, they go overseas and do studios as well. And here's a good example of studios that occurred in, in Malaysia and in also in Singapore. 
And for this one, we were hosted by a gentleman by the name of Hijaz Kasturi. If you're not involved with architecture, you may not know this gentleman, but he is a world famous Malaysian architect. And you may have seen some of these buildings, you may have seen them, not known they were designed by him. What's special about Hijaz is that he studied architecture here at Adelaide University in the 50s, late 50s, early 60s. So it's his way of giving something back to this university. We're also, what happens when we go to these places, we're, uh, we're escorted around building sites and studios by our alumni. That is, international students who have studied architecture here with us actually take great pride and say, you're one of our colleagues to be. Come through, we'll show you how it works here. And you're getting these differences all the way through. Second and third year, you're only 21, 22, maybe even less. So you're still very young, you're still enjoying it. We also have a lot of international visitors coming through the university. Here's one gentleman who came through last year, Shuguru Ban, world famous Japanese architect. He's famous because of, he designs building ends out of cardboard. Do you recall the terrible earthquake that occurred in uh, Christchurch, New Zealand last year that decimated the city? Well, the, you would have uh, no doubt seen the publicity about the cathedral that had been there so long was actually destroyed. Well, he offered and has donated his time free. He's redesigned that cathedral, been back there to actually see, uh, supervise the construction of it and it's just reopened. And it's done out of cardboard. Now, it's not the cardboard you and I use, it's actually proper cardboard. It's got similar strength uh, properties to sort of steel, concrete and timber. But that's his specialty. He came through Adelaide last year. We organised a public tour, a lecturer for him. We had him in a room that seated 250 we squeezed 350 in, into the room. We had 100 people outside desperately trying to get in. But the beauty of that is our students get that exposure all the time. We don't just teach, we also take you out on site. We show you how you experience by doing, by learning. So we take you to site visits as an example. And this is one we did last year, Adelaide Oval. We had some of my staff and some of my students go out to do a site visit there. This is not the only one, but obviously it's a big, high-profile one. The building is not yet finished. This is Adelaide Oval. This is what it will look like. But this is where they went. Another aspect of design generally is design revolves around people, be they individuals or be they groups. You have to be able to speak with them, get their message and translate that message into a way that actually produces meaningful solutions. And here's an example of last year where we were asked by Hamley Bridge, a little town north of Adelaide, to actually redesign their streetscape to actually create a new hub, a new centre for the city, or the town rather. And I took great pleasure in this photograph because it observes, you can observe our students actually in community consultation with the local residents in their local town hall. And be you architects, urban designers, planners or landscape architects or other design professions, unless you can communicate with people get their messages and articulate that, then translate that into a meaningful design, you haven't done your job. I'm really proud of this because these students won a superb award in the Main Street SA last year as a result of this work. This slide is an important slide because it shows the level of construction activity in this country. This was actually done in 2008. It predicted the slump, but also predicted that beyond the slump, it would be a levelling off. It wouldn't fall to the point where we're all on our knees. It's important that you as intending students and mums and dads recognise that if your children or you as individuals choose to do these programs, you will not necessarily be unemployed. There is work, there is life in the station and the predictions are that it will be, there will be a slight increase over a period of time. The mining boom has come and gone but that doesn't mean the rest of the country has fallen apart. So don't believe the politics. We're in the middle of an election campaign after all. You will get a job. It may not be in Adelaide, certainly if not here, interstate, but definitely overseas. So there is work in this field for you to actually undertake. In terms of careers, we work in multidisciplinary teams and you have a real advantage if you come out of here because you're already, already studying with a lot of those individuals, so you're on first name basis with them. But apart from the obvious architect, landscape architect, planner, urban designer, you can become an academic like myself. You can work as, in the, as a building scientist. You can work in conservation, in energy. You can even work in politics as an advisor to ministers about building issues, design issues and so on. So 
it, don't restrict yourself and say, all I want to do is sit and design buildings. Spread yourself out. There are many, many things you can do. Underlying and underpinning everything that we do is the way we actually teach you. We have a, use a concept known as design thinking, which is an innovative way of actually teaching you to solve problems in a creative way. And it, it does set you apart from others. It is a process of lateral thinking, taking into account all the issues, then coming up with a solution that takes all those issues into account. It is quite a unique thing to the design professions, but it's something that does set you apart and holds you in good stead in everything else that you do. In terms of starting salary, you do the, the five years, the, the, the undergraduate and the five year and the double, uh, the two year master's program. You start out as a professional, so you're talking fifty to fifty five thousand dollars starting salary, with significant increases over that time, over a period of years, depending on how hard you work, how good you are, and so on. In terms of employment, the last figure that we had was eighty percent of graduates are actually in full time employment. Now, let me say, that figure is probably a bit low probably closer to 90% because when these figures are taken, they're taken three months after graduation. And if you're like me, I was on a world holiday for six months. The last thing I wanted to do was think about work. Uh, don't tell that to your mums and dads, though my father did bankroll me. Um, and the last, so I was listed as unemployed. I was certainly not unemployed. In fact, I was offered a job, but I didn't want it. So this figure is probably closer to 80 or 90%. If you want a job, you can get it. You've got to be prepared to move around. Our facilities, um, you, some of you may have well have been here all day. Or I hope you've spent some time here. If you walk through Hub, the Hub Central, you may have had to, to get to this theatre. My school's located to the northeastern corner of that, so that's our front door. A superb facilities, and we make use of all those facilities in what we do. Here's my final year studio, brand new, state of the art. We have brand new uh, three-dimensional printing uh, in our model making laboratory. So we've got commercial printers and also laser printers. And we've moved up in quality so they're quasi-commercial in scale so that you as students can actually spend time experimenting and discovering your design potential. Actually making models, 3D models, uh, in a way that enables you to actually spend time enjoying it. Uh, the other aspect of our programs is that if we produce all these people doesn't mean very much if the industry doesn't recognise them. So we work very closely with professional bodies in our industry to get what's known as professional accreditation, recognition. So they come and spend several days with us. They go through our programs, they speak with our students, they speak to employers of our graduates, they speak to our staff, and they make a decision based on the content of everything they see. They look at the work. Is this program up to scratch, yes or no? And I'm pleased to say ours are. All of ours are up to scratch, industry standard. The beauty of that is that if it's recognised by the industry bodies here, they have reciprocal arrangements with international bodies. It means that you can practise and work overseas. Now, I'm sure each of you here probably knows somebody who's come from overseas. I know. I've had friends come from, say, Egypt, as an example, who've come here they didn't recognise their architecture degree. They were asked to go back and do another year. It doesn't tend to happen for people who graduate from Adelaide University. Just something to keep in mind. Part of your process of teaching is in exhibitions. You are involved in the design process after all, so you'll be giving, having exhibitions of your work, whichever field you're in. Now that is used to exhibit your work, tell the world how good you are, but it's also a way of getting feedback. So your peers, your students will tell you, give you comment about your work, the teachers will give you comment about your work, Industry will give you a comment about your work, and we use them as a form of critique, criticism, but in a constructive way. So that you can see your work is here, someone's next to you, gosh, this is how she solved that problem. I wish I'd thought of that, but it stays with you for the future. But we do that, and that can be open to the public or open to industry or just closed sessions. But it is a really very important part of teaching, and we do that all the time during the year. And here's an example of staff and students. As you can see, they're actually having fun. There is a fun component to it, but there's also a serious component in terms of the assessment. I've gone through that very, very quickly. I'm sure you have hundreds of questions. If not, I'm going to ask you, so I'm sure that'll provoke you. But do you have any questions? The, uh, sort of um, yes. 
the two new ones. Well, I can say one will be planning, the other one I can't say yet because I've got to get formal approval for it. But it will be in the areas of double masters. Yes? Uh, you do both. Um, I mean, the reality is, my experience is that if you can do freehand, you can often conceive ideas quicker. And if you're on site, you don't have your computer with you, you can do a quick sketch for the builder or whoever say, this is what I mean. So we make sure you have those skills, but the, the majority of the actual detailed work is done on CAD. Yes? Uh, we have an intake in first year of about 150, 160 sometimes, depending on the numbers. Uh, our attrition rate is 10%. From year to year? No. We get about 150, 160 starting in first year. By the, in, in the, you get some attrition, but by the time we get into the Masters, we get around about 100 in the Masters programs. So our, our attrition rate is probably lower than most. Uh, we generally do quite well. Yes? Um, what about contact hours? Oh, well, there's two types. The direct contact hours in terms of class is probably 12 to 15 hours a week, but that's a bit of a trap. For every hour you're here, you're meant to be spending two hours of your own time working. And because we are studio-based here, you're working in studios. A lot of students actually almost live in the studio. Some of them spend 24 hours there if they've got major submissions to actually prepare. So it's anywhere between 15 and 120, but I'm joking about that part. It's how hard you want to make it. Okay. Other questions? Well, let me give you some, something. Um, about 40% of our students are actually female, and they tend to be the better students. They do exceptionally well. Okay. All the girls are blushing. The guys have still got you know, whatever in their heads for the first couple of years, but then they take off as well. But they do exceptionally well. And no other questions? Well, to help you along the way, on the 22nd of November, is that right? We have the All In Exhibition. It's held here in the Hub. You've all been through that, I'm sure, today. We're, we exhibit all our students' work from first year right through to all the years in, the, in all the disciplines. It's really important that you come, if you get the opportunity to come through, it's open to the public, come through and have a look at the work that we actually do. The exhibits that we have up today are quite limited because we don't have the space or the time. But that is especially there, it's all the years we get the good and the bad, you get to see what's actually happening here. And I encourage you all to come along because several students who did that last year made their decisions based on that. No other questions? Well, good luck to everyone. I hope you choose wisely whatever you choose to do. Thank you. <laughs>